Harry and Meghan's Invictus Power Play Sussex's decision to pose with NATO chiefs just days before William heads for talks with the UN in New York is latest stage of the PR battle between the two brothers, experts say. Harry and Meghan's appearance with NATO chiefs in Germany today has stolen a march on Prince William in a PR battle between the two brothers and their wives, an expert told Mail Online today. The Prince of Wales will travel to New York next week as part of move to step up his role as a global statesman to meet United Nations leaders and attend a summit for his £50 million Earthshot Prize, which is now in its third year. William is increasingly popular in the U.S. and his trip has generated much interest across the Atlantic, with all major TV networks bidding for interviews. But the Duke and Duchess of Sussex met NATO Joint Force Commander General Luigi Miglietta today on the sidelines of Harry's Invictus Games, amid claims by athletes at the event that they felt caught up in the royal crossfire between him and his family. The couple held hands and smiled beside NATO chiefs and their families, including a large Italian and Dutch armed forces contingent, during the royal-style engagement in Dusseldorf. Brand and culture expert Nick Eat said the Sussex's decision to pose with NATO chiefs could be a power play in the personal PR battle. He said, Harry and Meghan know that this is a really good time to shine their lights on both the Invictus games, but other power players too. There will always be a power play between the two brothers and their wives as they are the most famous pairs on the planet so all eyes will be on them. With William meeting the UN chiefs next week, the brothers have covered some of the most important and powerful people on the planet. For both of them, this is positive PR, but also inevitably raise eyebrows as to where they will be going next. As William and Kate visited a forest school and a farm in the UK today, the Sussexes arrived at the Merkerspiel Arena in Dusseldorf this afternoon, where the sitting volleyball and table tennis is being held. The Sussexes arrived hand in hand, Megan in a bronze silk shirt and caramel trousers while her husband wore a smart navy suit and crisp white shirt. They smiled and waved with NATO bosses and their families. Megan showed her more formal side at a private meeting with NATO chiefs and their families. After sporting style shorts and a J. Crew cardigan to watch a wheelchair rugby event, she was dressed in a more demure style for the meet and greet. Megan wore loose-fitting wide-leg caramel trousers and a silky brown shirt. Harry wore a blue suit but no tie. The NATO event came after Harry had a private engagement in the morning while Megan relaxed in their suite at the Hyatt Hotel. He took part in a discussion organized by BetterUp, the Silicon Valley career and life coaching startup where he is chief impact officer on a reported seven-figure salary. Last night, the couple put on an extraordinary red carpet style display of flirting and affection at the games in their first official public engagements together since May. The Duchess of Sussex looked thrilled last night as her husband spoke coquettishly in her ear, clutched her hand and held her close at the Merkerspiel Arena. Body language expert Judy James told Mail Online today that the tactile royals were reasserting themselves as a global celebrity power couple. Their public displays of affection, hours after it emerged Meghan has taken off her engagement ring because a setting came loose, came after friends of the couple had torn apart speculation about their future in Hollywood and rumored strains behind the scenes. Ms. James said, Meghan and Harry's body language really does seem to signal that the Harry and Meghan Roadshow is back in the room. It's been a while since the fans have been treated to some of their signature rituals of togetherness as a couple and as a professional double act, but they appear here taking the applause like celebrities with Harry back in his proud, protective toe-long pose, hand in hand with a very excited looking Megan. Their hand clasp is mutual, with Harry's hand on top and a gesture of dominance and Megan's fingers are curled upward to show reciprocal affection as Harry leans to talk to her. Harry had traveled to Dusseldorf alone after a stopover in London. He and his wife have carried out a large number of solo events separately this summer. Their last public engagement was in New York in May when Megan was given a Women of Vision Award. Her mother Doria Ragland also attended. In early August Harry embarked on a boys-only Asian tour with best friend Nacho Figueres while his wife partied with friends watching Taylor Swift in LA and stayed at home to care for Archie and Lilibet. But last night Megan cozied up to one another in the crowd at the culmination of the wheelchair basketball where both looked delighted when the USA won. 
Before the final with France ended, Harry wrapped his arm around his wife as they watched the nail-biting action on court. Meghan had comforted him as he covered his eyes during a particularly stressful sporting moment. It was a world away from their previous appearance in public together almost a fortnight ago when Harry appeared bored and was looking at his phone as his wife danced with her mother Doria and friends at a Beyonce concert in California. Harry looked far happier 48 hours later when he saw Messi's Inter Miami play LAFC with other celebrities. The following day Megan was back watching Beyonce again with stars including Kelly Rowlands amid rumors of her big Hollywood relaunch including reviving her TIG lifestyle brand to rival Gwyneth Paltrow's $250 million goop. It came amid suggestions Megan is enforcing a brand separation from her husband after his best-selling book spare, containing many brutal attacks on his family, damaged their popularity in the U.S. and U.K. But Prince Harry's deep rift with his family is casting a shadow over the Invictus Games with the absence of his brother Prince William particularly keenly felt, veterans caught up in the royal crossfire have claimed. Harry's time in Afghanistan inspired him to launch the Invictus Games, but the Prince and Princess of Wales were central to its initial success. The couple's now defunct foundation formed with the Duke of Sussex hoovered up sponsors and spent huge sums of cash to get Invictus up and running. Nine years ago Harry, his father and brother stood united as they attended the opening ceremony and multiple events at the first ever Invictus Games in London, but the new king and his heir have had zero involvement since Harry met Meghan and they all fell out. Officials have said that despite Harry's passion for Invictus, which is growing in size, there have been plenty of seats at the Merkerspiel Arena in Dusseldorf. Some believe that the involvement of Charles, William and Kate would change that. The Prince and Princess of Wales have both been at the Rugby World Cup in France in the past week while King Charles and Queen Camilla and other senior royals have been at the Highland Games. One Team GB insider told The Telegraph, the athletes find it bizarre but don't want to get caught up in the royal crossfire. This year's games in Germany are the biggest ever involving 22 nations and 500 plus athletes. Harry has been there from start to finish, joining in with clapping and dancing in the crowd, and joking about going out on the beers at the end of the day. Many have enjoyed seeing the Harry of old, high-fiving children and singing Sweet Caroline in the days before his wife Meghan arrived. But there has been no word from his family in the UK. Double amputee Ben McBean, who was on the same return flight from Afghanistan as Harry in 2008 and was credited with inspiring the Duke to launch Invictus, said he understood both sides of the rift between the brothers, but added that they should have put their differences aside. He told the Telegraph, saying that they should have just given the lads a shout out. It's like when we went to Afghanistan, no one supported the war, but they supported the troops. It's the same thing. Palace sources reportedly say that members of the royal family never involve themselves in each other's professional endeavors, and they would not expect the Duke to voice support for the finalists of William's Earthshot Prize, for example. One critic of Harry said, Harry has never supported any of latest William's projects, not Earthshot when he is president of African Parks and advocate for climate change, no word about homewards either, but they insist William must support Invictus. I'm so tired of this nonsense. Earlier this month King Charles attended the Highland Games, an event which was a firm favorite of his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, with the Duchess of Cornwall. They were joined by Anne, Princess Royal, and her husband Sir Timothy Lawrence at the Games which have been a part of Scotland's culture for hundreds of years. Critics argue the royal family's ill will towards Harry should not be held against the disabled veterans who are competing. The Prince and Princess of Wales were integral in the early stages of the Invictus Games. The Royal Foundation, which was shared by Prince Harry at the time, invested significant amounts of money in the event. Meanwhile, Harry's brother Prince William continued with his charity work yesterday in London, visiting a building site to discuss the mental health of construction workers. His sister-in-law Kate has also been carrying out royal visits this week, going to HMP High Down in Surrey on Tuesday to learn more about the work of an addiction charity. King Charles